Good morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church Alive and Online. Welcome to all who have joined us from near and far. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. If you're tuning in for the very first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We encourage you to interact with us through Facebook chat because we want to hear from you. You can put your prayer requests in the comment section that runs on the right of our Facebook feed. You know, we're a happening place here at Resurrection, and we have several activities in which you can participate. Today, God's Work Our Hands Sunday and begins the week of service, but this year it's going to be a little bit different. In past years, we would head out right after worship to various locations in Spotsylvania County and the city of Williamsburg, uh, city of Fredericksburg, but this is Corona Tide. You can find various ways to participate in God's Work Our Hands Sunday, from advocacy to making quilts and care kits. For more information, you can find it in our Facebook feed under God's Work Our Hands. Tomorrow, we have a special opportunity to use our hands for God's work when we assist MICA Ministries. We will deliver meals to persons who are experiencing homelessness and food insecurity in the Fredericksburg area. And we could use a few more hands between 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. If you would like to join us, use the Google link in our Facebook feed or put a personal message or personal message us with your contact information and Gail Taylor will get you the needed information. The women's book study group gathers on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. to offer fellowship, caring conversation, and of course, book study. We are currently studying Blessed to Follow, the Beatitudes as a Compass for Discipleship by Martha Stortz. You don't need to have read the book to join in the discussion. This group is open to women of all ages, and the Zoom link can be found in the Facebook feed. This week, we continue our worship series entitled Through the Wilderness. Remember, we are in the wilderness. The people who just escaped from Egypt are standing on the shores, amazed at what God had accomplished. We're not done with their journey. They had only just begun. We're on a journey, too, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Join us as we go into the sea with Moses and discover what Jesus has to say about forgiveness. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Terry Evers, Alex Johnson, and Chuck and Ann Price. In the booth, we have David Norquist, Robert Schul, and Dave Evers. And I'm Heidi Moore, the pastor here at Resurrection. So wherever you are, join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God and sing, and sing with us the call to worship, Come All You People. You can find the words on the screen or in the bulletin. And again, welcome. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. 
We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away your transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who cry out in need, and through his death and resurrection, God, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness of, to do God's work in the world. Amen. The piece today is brought to us by the Reverend Bob Humphrey, Bishop of the Virginia Synod. I yearn for the time when I can once again say to all of you in person, the peace of Christ be with you. And then to hear you respond in person and also with you. How about you? Are you yearning for that time? I'm sure you are. And I'm absolutely confident that time will come. And in the meantime, I'm very grateful for the technology that allows us to still meet and learn and serve together in this time of pandemic. So, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. also with you. Join us as we sing our gathering hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail, verses 1, 4, and 5. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. With you.
join us for the prayer of the day. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the exhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Join us as we sing and read scripture. for today is Exodus 14 verses 19 through 31 and chapter 15 verse 20 to 21. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord 
and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us welcome the gospel with song. Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, when another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be pre, uh, compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he says, Pay what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he refused, and then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite all the kiddos to come forward and join me here by this up on by your screen. And I've brought my calculator out because I want to make sure I've got this right. So seven times seven is how much? Seven times seven is forty-nine. Okay. And, and, but Jesus said seven times 70? Is that what he said? Let me see. Seven times 70? 490. 490 times I have to forgive somebody? Are you kidding me? No, Jesus wasn't kidding. And forgiving people is probably one of the hardest things that we are called as Christians to do. 
to forgive someone who has wronged us. And here Jesus is saying, you need to forgive them at least 490 you know what? 490 in the Bible, you know, that's a lot. That is a lot. And for the people who were hearing this parable, they would have understood that there was going to be no end to the forgiveness that we are called to give each other. So the next time that you feel hurt by someone, I encourage you to go to them and talk with them. And above all, offer your forgiveness. Thank you. So welcome to the wilderness. I reflected on these texts as we as a country and community observed the 19th anniversary of the bombings of the World Trade Center, Pentagon, and of course United Airlines Flight 93. And over the 3,000 lives that were lost that day and the lives that continue to be lost due to illnesses because they responded. In Exodus, we read about a nation pers um, uh, we read about a nation pursuing recently freed slaves and crashing walls of water and Miriam's song of praise and victory over a tyrannical leader. And 19 years ago, I remembered the false reports of Muslims in the country celebrating the devastation of 9-11. You have to understand that those lies were ex exposed, but some still cling to that image. So this is a very odd place to be, reading about the destruction of the Egyptian army so long ago and the celebration that ensued on earth and in heaven. Now, rabbinic teaching says, but God turned to the angels and said, why do you rejoice when my children have drowned in the sea? The rabbis were, of old were clearly uncomfortable with this story and so included heaven's sadness of the demise of the Egyptians. And as I read those words, a hard realization crystallized for me. The ancient Egyptians were God's children too. And even then, when God said all, God meant all. There is never rejoicing over loss of life ever. We are all God's children. And because we are all God's children, God shows up always and without fail. We call Jesus Emmanuel, which means the with us God. And likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Romans eight twenty six. And that is where we start today in the difficult times of Corona Tide and COVID-19. We start with God with us. God with us in our hopelessness, in our struggles, our fears, our sadness. And yes, when there is joy too, God shows up. Sometimes in really strange ways, as evidenced by the flight of the Israelites, led by a pillar of cloud, they went forth into the wilderness as they escaped from Egypt. And then Pharaoh began to have second thoughts. What have we done? We just kicked out our entire workforce. Let's go get them back. And what is remarkable about this story is the movement of the pillar of cloud. It moves from the front all the way to the back. Yes, it's moved to the back to protect them from Pharaoh's army, but perhaps so much more, perhaps to push the Israelites into the sea, to which they objected vehemently and complained bitterly and whined incessantly. And so it began for 40 years. But that is another story for another time. God's work, our hands, right here in the Bible. Yes, God will protect them. Yes, God will save them. But God is not going to do it all by God's self. You do it. 
God says to Moses, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the pillar of cloud pushed them into the sea on dry land and they walked to safety and to freedom. So what at first seemed hopeless was made hopeful by God. God made a way for them. And God makes a way for us to stretch out your hand. Stretch. In this time of COVID, racial upheaval, political unrest, and perhaps that is what God is calling us to do at this time, to stretch. Because it is only through stretching that we will be able to grow. And yes, growth is uncomfortable and not always pretty and always challenging and just downright hard, but God is with us. So the question is, where are we going to stretch and how? As a community, as a people, as individuals, where do we start? Do we start with our resources? Do we start with our security? Do we start by changing our worldview and getting out of our echo chambers? Where do we begin? Because unless we stretch as a community and as a people of the community, there will be no transformation. And as I was reminded yesterday in this past week, I cannot ask people around me to change unless I change myself and ask God's help in that change. So to that end, as I have shared with some of you, for me personally, and I will say I only speak for myself at this point, that it is not enough for me to be not racist, but rather to develop with the help of God in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, an attitude of anti-racism. What that will look for me, I don't know. I just don't. But what I do know is that the pillar of cloud is definitely pushing me in that direction. So I'm just going to go with it. That is what I have discerned that God is calling me to do and be at this time and in this place. And I will see what transformation God will effect in me. And quite frankly, it's, it's kind of scary. Okay, it's really scary. And this might just be the place where we can bring in the discussion of forgiveness that Jesus is having with Peter and the disciples. Jesus had been teaching his disciples on how to deal with someone who has offended. And in the first century, there are very clear rules about how many times you need to forgive someone, and that number was seven. So Peter is not suggesting that seven is a good number. He's just making sure that he has the right answer. But he should have known better than to ask that kind of question to Jesus, because what does Jesus answer? <laughs> not just seven, but 70 times seven, or as I figured out on my calculator, 490. And as I said, which in Bibleese means a boatload of forgiveness. Then Jesus shares a parable, a story that is not necessarily true, but reveals truth about Jesus God or what the kingdom of heaven is like. And parables also open up the realities of our lives. Let's face it. Just face it. Forgiveness is downright hard. And in the grief of being wronged or overlooked, we forget the incredible and extravagant grace of God. While forgiveness can be called for, it cannot be forced. And again, thinking personally, I know that I've gotten stuck by some offense or personal slight. And make no mistake, we are not to abandon accountability. But accountability without mercy is not what God is about. And remembering the words of Gandhi, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Forgiveness cannot be qualified, even though Peter tried. But get, getting even is an Avengers game, not the one of a follower of Jesus. In the end, love and grace must win. Love and grace will win. 
And it is in that grace of God that we find transformation. And forgiving won't be something that we do. Forgiving will be a part of who and whose we are. Children of God, loved, forgiven and forgiving, giving and receiving mercy. We are also called to remember a day over 2,000 years ago when God's son, son hung on a cross and looking down at the sea of angry faces and broken lives and hearts, called from the cross and asked God to forgive them. Not because he was unwilling to do it himself, but to give all of us a future, a future full of mercy and hope and courage and healing and love and new life. May we as a community live life in the light of the love of a forgiving and hopeful and merciful God. Using the light, may we have the faith and the courage to walk into a future created by God who loves us so very much. This Exodus story is a reminder that God is, with, is in this with us. And God will bring redemption and healing even from the most difficult of circumstances. God brings hope. Most importantly, God is active in our story, weaving together all the tragedy and joy for a better future than we can ever imagine even a future that is hard to imagine after COVID, a future even as we go into the sea. Amen. drawn together in the compassion of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth, especially those of the RLC confirmation class. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation, where human selfless, selfishness has brought ruin and destruction. We look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who are hungry and guard refugees fleeing fam famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. We especially remember this day Marlene Jordan, Bill Evans, Steve Sint. We remember those who are fleeing or have died from the wildfires on the West Coast. We continue to pray for our first responders and those on the front line of COVID, those who have been deemed necessary personnel. We ask that you be with, uh, put your healing hands on the two policemen who were ambushed in Compton, California. May they know that your love is with them and may their assailants hear your voice of mercy and grace and share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we uh, offer opportunities to give to the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. Because of you, this ministry right here goes on. And we had over 350 views on just our Facebook feed alone. Because of your generosity, you make this happen. And you, make, you help us to reach and love and care as we share the light of Christ. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Sometimes I'm lifted to the mountain tops where I soar on eagle's wings. Joy overflows and I give you praise as you make my secret sing. But there are times when the road ahead leads through
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as, Savior, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration song. blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things past, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Join us now for our sending hymn, Shout to the Lord.
as we send you out in mission, just a few reminders. Today begins the week of God's work, our hands, and week of service. Be sure to check our, our Facebook feed for all the opportunities that are there. Next Sunday, we will have our Theology Pub and uh, the... the <laughs> okay. <laughs> the link is in the Facebook feed. <laughs> Go in peace. Christ is with you. <laughs> Thanks be yeah. to God. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Yeah.